Hello everyone. Today I will be discussing genetic disorders organized by chromosome, and this information typically is not directly tested on the USMLE. They won't directly ask you what chromosome a specific disease appears on. However, from what I read online, uh, typically in question stems, they will mention a chromosome number, and that will be used to clue you into a specific disorder that may be presented within a clinical vignette. So with that, um, I've come up with a mnemonic that um, you can use to memorize which disorders appear on which chromosomes. So I'll first be going over the single digit chromosomes, chromosomes three through nine. And of course, these aren't all of the diseases that you'll have to know, but these are the very high yield ones that are mentioned quite often in textbooks and uh, online. So first, I need to tell you how I structured this mnemonic. So for the first single digit chromosomes, I've come up with a weird scenario that will stick in your memory, hopefully on test day as well. And using this mnemonic, you can remember which disorders appear on which chromosomes. So to start off, we have three hippos riding in a car. I've put in red and bold um, all of the important details that you need to remember. So for instance, the letter R in riding and car are important things to take note of. So you have three hippos riding in a car. So hippos obviously can't drive. That's why you have a fourth person, human, a dwarf, that is driving the car. And this dwarf is an adult. Kids can't drive. So uh, it's not a kid, it's an adult. And just for further clarification, he's 20 years old. The two in 20 is also important to remember. The fifth person, or not person, but um, I guess animal that appears in this scenario is a cat. Um, so you have three hippos, right? One in the passenger seat, perhaps two in the back, and then a dwarf driving the car, and also there's a cat, and that makes for a five-person family. So another detail I forgot to mention was that the dwarf is ripped, so he has an iron heart six-pack. Pretty, pretty straightforward. And the next, the car has rainbow tires. Um, this is a pretty weird car. Remember, in rainbows, there are seven colors. So uh, rainbows are what I'm using to represent the number seven. So these tires are obviously made of rubber, as all tires are. And it's covered, these tires are covered in thick mud. And then lastly, this car also has nine exhaust tubes. Typically, a normal car has one exhaust tube, or maybe even two. But this car has nine exhaust tubes because it can go super, super fast. When I'm driving on the highway, typically the fastest that I drive would be up to 90 miles per hour. So this car can go 91 miles per hour. So now we're going to go over the disorders that appear in this story. And hopefully you can use the story to remember each of these disorders and the chromosomes they appear on. On chromosome number three, you have von hippo lindau disease and renal cell carcinoma. So the way that I remembered it was using the hippo, three hippos riding in a car for von hippel lindau disease. And also riding in a car, you have the R in riding standing for renal and you have the car in car, standing for carcinoma. So on chromosome four, you have two diseases that appear in this mnemonic. First, you have achondroplasia, and second, you have ADPKD, or autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Specifically, the gene that's located on chromosome four is PKD2. Uh, it's important to note this because there's also another gene, PKD1, that also results in ADPKD. I know I didn't mention in this chromosome Huntington's disease, which also appears on chromosome four, but I'll be addressing that disease later on in this video. So the way that I remember these diseases, obviously, is with the fourth person in the car. You have three hippos who can't drive, so you have a dwarf. Um, achondroplasia is one of the most common causes of dwarfism, so that's pretty straightforward. And also, ADPKD can be remembered, be remembered by the fact that this dwarf is an adult. He's not a kid, he's an AD adult. In addition, uh, remember from the story, he is 20 years old. And the 2 in 20 will help you remember that this is PKD2 on chromosome number 4. So next on chromosome 5, you have two disorders. First, you have Cree du Chat syndrome, and second, you have familial adenomatous polyposis. Um, first, remember from the story, the fifth person on the car is the cat. And in Cree du Chat syndrome, uh, what is typically presented is a high-pitched crying or a meowing. Thus, the presence of the cat can be used to remember Cree du Chat syndrome on chromosome number 5. And second, you also have familial adenomatous polyposis. Um, this also appears on chromosome 5. And if you remember, in this family, uh, you have five members. So familial adenomatous polyposis appears on chromosome number 5. It's important to note that there's other diseases that also appear with familial in it, such as familial, familial hypertriglyceridemia or familial hypercholesterolemia. Uh, so just remember that it's familial adenomatous polyposis that appears on chromosome 5 and not the other familial diseases. Next, you have uh, hemochromatosis on chromosome 6. And I think this mnemonic is self-explanatory. The dwarf has a six-pack, and the six-pack is iron hard. So that's why iron hemochromatosis appears on chromosome six. And also on chromosome number seven, uh, remember the rainbow tires covered in uh, thick mud? Well, rainbow stands for seven because there's seven colors in a rainbow. And the tires are made of rubber, which is an elastic substance. And in Williams syndrome, there is a 7q11.3 deletion of the elastin gene. 
So these elastic rubber tires can help you remember that Williams syndrome appears on chromosome number seven. In addition, if you remember the tires, they were covered in a thick mud. And this thick mud helps me remember thick mucus. And thick mucus is typically secreted in the lungs with uh, cystic fibrosis. When there is a deficiency in chloride uh, ion secretion within the lungs, then that causes uh, sodium ions to also be reabsorbed within the lung epithelium. And that results in water being drawn inwards as well, creating a very thick mucus. And that is uh, something that you can use to remember that the rainbow tires are covered in a thick mud. You can remember cystic fibrosis. And lastly, if you remember from the story, there's also uh, nine exhaust tubes on the car. And tubes help me remember tuberous sclerosis. And specifically, the car was going 91 miles per hour because of these exhaust tubes. That will help you remember that TSC1 is the gene that is affected on chromosome number nine in tuberous sclerosis. There's also TSC2 that appears later, and I'll address that in another scenario. So next I'll be going over a series of mnemonics that you can use to remember the disorders on chromosomes 11 to 17. Uh, and these ones were harder for me to think of, so uh, they might not be as good, but um, they're still useful and better than simply memorizing strings of diseases that you can easily mix up. So first for chromosome 11, we'll talk about racial tensions. And as you see, racial tensions um, are typically in America fought between white, white without the H in this case, and black, black with a beta, uh, white and black men. And how do I associate this with chromosome number 11? Well, if you hold up two middle fingers, uh, it, makes the, it makes the number 11. And so what I imagine is a group of white and black men all holding up their two middle fingers at each other. And that helps you remember chromosome, chromosome number 11. Next, uh, the number 13 is a very unlucky number. If you find a penny that is upside down, you have real bad luck. Not bad real luck, you have real bad luck. So that's something that you can take note of. Also, uh, chromosomes number 15 to 17, I really couldn't come up with anything uh, associated with these numbers. Uh, I was thinking something along the lines of 15 is the number uh, that of points that you score in tennis with the first point, but um, I really couldn't think of anything. So I came up with a long sentence that doesn't really make sense, but um, you can still use it better than remembering a string of diseases again. So uh, in this case, I came up with Pam ate one apple, two tomatoes before 1 p.m. nap. Now I'm going to be going over the diseases shown in these um, shown in these mnemonics. So first, on chromosome number 11, you have Wilms tumor. Wilms tumor is represented by white. Remember, W-I-T, white men. A well, Wilms tumor can uh, be associated with that, and that appears on chromosome number 11 with the two middle fingers. Beta globin is also located on chromosome number 11. So disorders associated with beta globin, such as sickle cell disease or um, beta thalassemia, are disorders on chromosome number 11. Lastly, men, remember they were white and black men. Well, men stands for multiple endocrine neoplasia, and that is also a disorder of chromosome number 11. Chromosome number 13, you have Wilson's disease, retinoblastoma 1, and BRCA2. So Wilson's disease is caused by uh, excess of copper. Remember, iron was for the iron hard six-pack on chromosome number 6. Well, Wilson is a disease that is involved with copper. So when you think of a six-pack, don't think of copper hard six-pack. Think of iron hard six-pack. And copper is what is the material made in pennies. So when I think of 13, remember, if you find an upside-down penny, it's unlucky. Well, 13, unlucky, you have Wilson's disease. Um, in addition, it's real bad luck. And you can see where I'm going with this. Real bad is RB, and that's the first two letters uh, that you think of when you think of retinoblastoma. And also, there is BRCA2 on this gene, uh, I mean, on this chromosome. And to remember this, you just think of real bad luck. And remember, the penny can be upside down when you find it. Well, then that can be associated with the upside down version of real bad luck or bad real luck, and that is BRCA2. And real bad comes first because that's the normal way, so that's retinoblastoma 1, and BRCA2 comes second, so that's uh, BRCA2. Next on chromosome 15, you have the two disorders of imprinting, Carter Willi and Angelman syndrome, and also you have Marfan syndrome. And if you remember for the diseases on chromosomes 15 through 17, I came up with the sentence Pam ate one apple, two tomatoes before 1 p.m. nap. So 15 will be represented by Pam. And that's pretty self explanatory. The first letter of each disease uh, is makes up the three letters in Pam. On chromosome 16, you have three diseases, alpha globin, uh, which, is a di which isn't a disease, but um, alpha thalassemia, which is a mutation in alpha globin, is a disease. Um, you have ADPKD uh, with a disorder in the PKD1 gene, and you have tuberous sclerosis. So the way I remember it is, remember, Pam, what did Pam do? Pam ate one apple and two tomatoes. So in this case, eight will stand for alpha globin, or alpha thalassemia. One apple will stand for PKD1, or ADPKD, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. And two tomatoes will stand for tuberous sclerosis with a disease in with a mutation in TSC2. 
So for chromosome 17, you have three important genes that uh, you should remember. So Pam ate one apple and two tomatoes before 1 p.m. nap. So before 1 p.m. nap will stand for B, will stand for BRCA1, which is a tumor suppressor. 1 p.m. P will stand for P53, which is also a tumor suppressor. And nap will stand for neurofibromatosis type 1. And if you're confused about what type there's neurofibromatosis type 1 and type 2, if you're confused which one is located on chromosome 17, remember the nap happened at 1 p.m. So BRCA1 and NF1 are both on chromosome 17. So those are all the disorders that appear high yield on USMLE that it'd be useful for you to know the chromosome number of. Um, there's a couple of disorders that I did not mention within those mnemonics, and I'll go over them right now. So on chromosome number 22, you have two major disorders, 22Q11 deletion and neurofibromatosis 2. So 22Q11, uh, the number 22 is within the name of the disorder. So you would know that DeGeorge syndrome and real cardiofacial syndrome are both located on chromosome number 22. Also neurofibromatosis 2, if you remember from before, NF1 appears on chromosome number 17. Well, NF2 will appear on chromosome number 22. So that is sort of intuitive as well. On the X chromosome, you also have a few diseases that you should remember. Um, these are pretty obvious, so I didn't make a mnemonic for them. You have Kleinfelter syndrome, we have two X's and one Y. You have Turner syndrome, uh, X monosomy, and you also have um, X-linked A gamma globulinemia or Bruton A gamma globulinemia. And also, um, in addition to that, you have fragile X syndrome. Fragile X is on the X chromosome. You also have trisomies, which I didn't mention. Trisomies can only appear on chromosomes number 13, 18, 21, and the sex chromosomes. So um, those are pretty easy to remember. 13 is Patel syndrome, 18 is Edwards syndrome, and trisomy 21 is obviously Down syndrome. Lastly, I did not mention the trinucleotide repeat expansions. And I didn't mention these because there is a better way for you to remember these, and I might go over them in another video. But just so that uh, they're mentioned in this video, um, you have Huntington's disease appearing on chromosome 4, uh, Friedrich ataxia on chromosome number 9, uh, myotonic dystrophy on chromosome number 19, and fragile X syndrome, which I already mentioned, is on the X chromosome. And with that, that is all of the disorders and chromosome numbers that you need to know for STEP.